Hello everyone, welcome to this episode. We are still on our journey through the foundations and vocabularies of how to talk about art and we are now in mediums and processes. So today we're gonna focus on two-dimensional art and the the two most common and, and favorite throughout history of two-dimensional art of this kind is drawing and painting. And so the goal today is to just give you an overview of all the different things that um, drawing and painting can do and have been done also giving you some keywords and some technical information as well. So let's get started. So the outcomes today, um, we are, you will be able to identify the function of drawing and painting, like why draw, why paint, and its applications. You'll also be able to just describe the different media associated with drawing and painting, right? That drawing and painting is a two-dimensional uh, artwork, but there are different tactics right of, of doing of doing that work and then you you'll be able to explain how the function and media of drawing and painting work together to create meaning and impression so like any type of tool right you can use it to convey something and um artists interested in interested in drawing and painting have used their techniques for certain purposes which i always think is very fascinating and we will discuss that today I want to start with just thinking about the functions of drawing and the functions of drawing tend to uh, number one talk something about drawing but it also relates to painting so i don't want us to think about drawing and painting as necessarily two very very distinct things they often go hand in hand for example what you see in front of you um is two two different works one is a the one on your left is a drawing um, and the one on the right is a painting and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what kind of painting in a little bit but they are both by the art artist Raphael who if some of you may have heard that name before it's one of the Ninja Turtles which means that it was probably a famous Renaissance uh, Italian painters and so we have Raphael um, having a car on the on the left. He has the a cartoon for uh, the School of Athens, and then on the right we have uh, the School of Athens. So the painting, and so you can see what he's done. He has created with chalk and car and, and charcoal a drawing, a scale drawing of what he wants to paint right um, on on the right. And so drawing has uh, in many ways been the function of it early on has been as a uh, a way a mapping it's a sketchbook right it's something that you want to it's an idea you, you you want to replicate in maybe a different media so if any of you are artists um, of any type you probably you know, have a sketchbook and you sketch things out you know and think about ideas before you you do the final work and this technique of doing a drawing a specific a, a cartoon is what what they are called for um, a fresco painting. That was a very common technique that you wanted to map everything out right off the bat because with fresco painting, you have to paint fairly quick. You don't have time to ponder, oh, well, what am I going to paint next, etc. And we'll talk a bit about that um, later. And so hopefully you see hand in drawing, painting, they go hand in hand. Um, we can't necessarily separate them um, from each other. Um, and but but also a lot of artists and we'll see examples that drawing doesn't have to be a just a sketch uh, for something else it can be an end in itself and it can be a very expressive medium um, as well. And so the different types of drawings that you can do if we're if we're really just focusing on drawings and the different uh, techniques, you can do a detailed drawing. <clears throat> and this is a really great example of a very detailed drawing. Another another Ninja Turtle, another very famous Renaissance painter, Leonardo da Vinci. He's well known uh, for his paintings. Um, as but I, for me, my favorite of Leonardo da Vinci are, are actually his sketchbooks and his notebooks, where he um, used pen and ink 
to 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 sketch and these were very much um all about observation and he loved anatomy he loved engineering and technology and he used these books as a way to observe the natural environment the human body but also to create and engineer the these these uh, machines right these fl in he you know flying machines and pumps and um different things like that and so what you're looking at is one of his uh, anatomical drawings, specifically the muscles uh, of the shoulder. And you can see that um, that the detail is really aiding in what he wants to do, right? He wants to observe very closely. He wants to articulate the human body, all the tendons and all the, the skeleton of the shoulder. And so detail is very important for him for that particular purpose. And this is also an example of a life drawing. And um, a life drawing is, is very easy to remember. It's drawing from something that is ex in front of you, right? So it's physically in front of you. Um, and so a drawing is from a model that is live, meaning physically there, not using photographs um, as, as a reference. And so you're probably looking at the, this notebook and you're saying, okay, well, yeah, the Leonardo was looking at um, bodies, right? He actually you know, did autopsies and that aided him in really understanding how the body works. And during this time, that was very important because medical knowledge, medicine, how you know, body systems, that, that was still very much in in development of actually understanding, well, you know, you lift your shoulder and these these are the muscles that that lift, right? And so he was actually looking at at um at at bodies and that were no longer alive and very, very influential work. So this is a detailed drawing using life. But you don't have to be uh, very detailed um, in, in your drawing. And this is an example of, of a less detailed drawing by Alan Capro. And hopefully you, you see what's going on. It's, it's it, because it's less detailed, it becomes a little bit more abstract, right? We're using one of our nice words that we've been using, our visual words. And this is a nude looking at a, a mirror um, with pot on stove. So hopefully you, you get a sense of, okay, this is a human body. We get a sense that it's a nude body and you can see what's going on. But this is a great example of a less detailed drawing that is becoming very expressive. So it's not like Leonardo where I need to observe this woman exactly how she's existing in this space, right? He, you know, if he, that's not the purpose, right? And you can see that in the gesture, right? This is a gesture drawing. And gesture drawings aims to aim to identify and react to the main visual and expressive characteristics of form, right? So he's just, he's not, he's interested in how she's moving through space. He's in, and he's interested in how her curves may mimic other curves in the the scene notice you know the pot and you know her her buttocks and her head right it's about capturing energy dynamics of a movement subjects and situations in a moment so we can imagine that alan capro is really trying to capture a fleeting moment right this woman in this space um and and in the gesture drawing is aiding in capturing the energy right the air around around her what's happening and so uh, so another example of a great use of drawing right with very different from say the leonardo da vinci who's interested in that scientific eye and then we have a, a great example here <laughs> um of a um of, of something that's very gestural, but also a, a bit detailed. Um, and, I, and I use this to show you that you know, these d definitions aren't hard and hard and, and fast, right? So we artists tend to blend de attention to detail with a more gestural m motion all the time. And this is a drawing by Umberto Boccioni. It's muscular dynamism. So he's kind of combining both uh, of what I showed you of Leonardo and Alan Capra, right? He's interested in muscularity. He's interested in 
um, the, a body moving through space. And what's really great about this artist um, is that he's part of a movement called Futurism. And they were very interested in, in particular, soldiers, right? Soldiers moving through through space. They're interest, interested in um, machinery of, of war. They're interested in planes and tanks um, working, you know, around uh, <laughs> leading up to um, World War One, And so we get a sense and you can kind of see, you can see um, musculature and you can see that mo that motion that going forward, right? We can see a shoulder here, we can see an arm here, we can see a leg and um, knees. But he, so he is giving attention and detail to those spaces, but because he's interested in the motion, this gestural, um, is aiding right it's aiding um that sense of this is this is a body moving through the air um through space and time and he, he uh actually used you know he had these drawings but he also was really interested in the same process um with with sculpture of actually you know, having a sculpture that has the same kind of dynamics right of capturing the air and the motion around um, an object uh, moving through space. So now we're going to concentrate on the different materials of drawing. And so uh, we're going to think about paper, we're going to think about pencils, charcoals, um, these sort of dry materials of, of, of drawing, but also we're going to think about the wet, right? The ink and the brush drawing and the pen, right? So these are all the different materials of ways that you can um, articulate drawing. And so we have paper, right, as a medium uh, that that you draw upon, and you can draw upon a lot of different types of surfaces. But paper is a very old and historyed one to use. Um, it's very old, and so I have a really old <laughs> example for you from ancient Egypt of a type of paper that was made from uh, that was called papyrus, right? So, and it's it's important to understand that you know paper is a organic compound, which makes which I like paper so much. Um, it's it's made from the pulp of different types of organic matter. You can add cotton, you can add a lot of different things, and paper makers they do a lot of creative add-ins um, to make to make paper um, but it is a very old uh, medium for for artists to to draw and paint upon and here I have an, a, an example of the paper making process I won't spend so much time on it um, but just to show you that you know, you start with plants you can you start with scraps you start with clo old clothing and you basically make a pulp right um and you you blend it up right and then you you suspend it in um a liquid right water and then you usually have these screens then the size of your paper sheets that you then lift right and then it dries and you press it so it is a very laborious process um and and i love this uh <clears throat> woodblock print from japan of uh the paper making process in, in a studio um and for that culture. And so you can use pencil it's, and, and color pencil, very popular. We, this is something we've, we've all probably done. And so we have on um, the left um, a wonderful uh, graphite pencil sketch, a very a close sketch of the hands. And you can see that with graphite, you have a lot of control over how you can do a, a kind of a more hard edge with the, using the tip, right? Or you can use a lot of shading, right? And I, and I love love this example because it, it really shows the power of of that media to really oscillate between um, soft and hard and high contrast lights and darks right <clears throat> and then colored pencils right you can do the same things but um, that the color really adds to uh, you know thinking about movement capturing the eye right um, looking at Martin uh, Ramirez's untitled from 1954 you you know he's using it to guide us through this very um, psychedelic <laughs> landscape of cars going through a tunnel are they going into a building right we don't know but the way that the, he's using the blues and the purples is really guiding us through this very fanciful landscape right and so you can use the color pencil to 
um, change the mood, change the style, but also to guide the eye. And then we have charcoal. And um, charcoal is also made from organic um, car carbon that has been, um, you know, burned right <laughs> down to its, its basic parts. So it has this really um, wonderful black to gray type uh, of color. And here are two different charcoal drawings of a similar subject. And I love talking about uh, the similar subject matters because they're, because it's a good way to think about similarities and differences. And, you know, notice that d d these are very different <laughs> uh, representations of these elderly, elderly um, women. So uh, the one on the left is Kathy Kalwitz. This is her self-portrait. So she's, this is herself, right? And then um, Leon August Ermit, Ermit, an elderly peasant woman. And um, starting with the one on the right, you see that charcoal you can get you can get really detailed, right? And this is very high contrast, really focusing on the wrinkles in her face and the expressiveness there. Um, but then you see Kathy Kalwitz, hers is a lot more gestural. So going back to what I was talking about, about you can do more detailed drawings, you can do more gestural drawings. And so you can see that he, he right here is really interested in capturing that detail, you know, the, the expression and perhaps we letting viewers go in and really think about, well, oh, what is she thinking about? Um, and and, and, and capturing that, that, that psychology, perhaps. And also the way she looks. Um, and then we have on the left, we have this gestural drawing um, of the artist who is doing doing her self-portrait, right? So if you think about her, you know, she's looking at herself and she's capturing herself in this in this moment. And so, you know, she's focusing on her face because it is a self-portrait. It is important to have that resemblance. Um, but notice that the body is less important. What is she focusing on? Her hands, because she's an artist, right? and that's important and then also her face but but you also should notice actually that here we have um a different look and so in a slightly different the way that the charcoal is, is is moving across that paper and paper is textured paper can have different textures and depending on that texture your material that you're putting on the paper will have a slightly different um effect so notice here and uh, this is an ex very clear example of you have gestural and deep detailed um, work, but then the paper, the support itself, can also change the way it looks. So here, um, Kathy Kowitz's uh, paper is called laid, right? So the texture is very, these horizontal lines, which you see very clearly, it comes out um, in with the charcoal. And then with um, the other example, we have wove, so it's it's more of like uh, you know vertical and horizontal lines, and it, it allows the the this the charcoal to disperse a little bit more that you 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 know you you don't necessarily see um, all the lines, and so it's good also good to know to to, st to understand that the it's not only the material of drawing but it's also the support that can change the way something looks. And then we have pastels, and I, I've, I've worked with pastels a lot. It was one of my favorites in when I was doing art classes in high school, and um, that's because oops, oh, oops, sorry. And that is because of the the vibrancy of the of the color itself, right? So you're you're kind of you're combining um, a lot of different techniques that you could use in. in colored pencils and charcoals and 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 pastels are going to work a little bit different they don't blend very well together i mean you can you can really work at blending but it is going to have this um kind of cross hatching look right um and so a lot you can it's, it's very detailed you have to have very you know detailed marks right um but it's still going to have that expression and you can do a lot with the color and the lighting as Edgar Degas the tub very clearly shows you know this combination of the oranges with the cool colors of the of the blues and then using the whites and the light right to really highlight the body of of the nude in in the tub bathing right and 
so you and I, and I like this this comparison with Leonardo da Vinci's anatomical drawings because you can see you know they have a similar interest in wanting to capture the body in a certain movement in a certain way, um, but but the material gives it a different character. You can kind of see this as being a little bit more um, empirical, right? Kind of sterile versus you know Edgar Degas, Edgar Degas is giving it this dynamic. Um, you know, sense and very expressive. So now we're going to move on to the wet, uh, the, the wet materials of drawing, and one of them is brush drawing. And so this would this example is ink, so ink on paper that is actually applied with a brush, right? Um, and so this is an example of you know where we start to see the blurring between drawing and painting happening, right? Um, but um, so the ink on paper here, very popular technique for. Japanese painters as well as in, in, in China as well. But here we have an example of a Japanese ink painting. And the thing with ink is that, you know, just like ink in a pen, um, that it, it's, it can be very um, dark, right? So you can see very, very dark where the ink is pooling, right? So, so you get a very concentrated color versus you can change using water um, and, you know, different dryness of your brush to make it gray, right? So it has this wonderful scale from really dark to this really light gray. And, you, the, and in Sesso Toyo is really utilizing that difference depending on how, how much water you put in and how much how or how concentrated it is to create this wonderful landscape suddenly it appears right so we have a tree uh, in in a landscape with perhaps mountains or clouds behind it and this is also something that need, needs to be planned ahead as well the, the, the part of this technique is that with you know ink you, you have to move a little bit fast if, and, it's, and so it gets, it gets very gestural um to to make uh these these movements which is also a, a a type of meditative experience for this type of painting which is often associated with um zen buddhism um and you know this kind of repetition of movements um and spontaneity right so this is a very spontaneous right you, you get a sense that you know it's planned but it has this expressive flow um was also part of it and then we have ink pen, right? So not on a brush, like actually in a, a vessel, a fountain pen. Uh, and so you can create much, have these very detailed lines. So like in comparison, this on the brush, it's, it have, you have these fat, expressive brush strokes that you see. But with pen, you can really, you can do that, right? You can see, you can have the ink that's kind of just splotched over creating the, the darks and the lights, but then you can go back, right? And you can make more detailed lines to create, um, you know, face expressions, uh, the, the folds of the clothing, et cetera. And especially here, I like this, the, the column, right? Showing that this is, this is a, a very classical looking, uh, column and, and giving that detail and giving information for viewers, right? So uh, Giovanni Gaberi, uh, the Samson capture by the Philistine, he's trying to, he's creating a kind of a, a history, a history image um, from the Bible, right? Of And so you, he needed the detail so that viewers can, can understand and go into that particular narrative. And then we have drawing um, as an end to itself, which I, I, I told you at the beginning that sometimes, you know, drawings, drawings can just be for contemplation and, um, and really for, for, for us to just kind of wander. And I love uh, Vija Kelman's work, and she works primarily with graphite, so with pencil, and in very painstakingly detailed looks at uh, different surfaces, specifically within the environment. So here we have the ocean, and it's just a close-up on waves, but she also does moonscapes, rockscapes, in, in a similar way. Um, and so this is not necessarily to plan for anything. This is for us to to wander. I mean, and you can kind of see she has that 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 intense detail that we saw in Leonardo's drawing because we really attentive to the smallest movements of water something that we probably don't 
real see when we go to when we see go to the lake or we go to the ocean we don't necessarily concentrate on these minute ripples but she's using it to force us to contemplate that and that's why i really really love her work